Hello everyone, welcome to Raw Online. I'm Dr. Abhinaya. I'm a consultant pediatrician. So in Nelson based pediatric teaching in the chapter of infectious diseases, the topic of discussion now is on diagnosis and management of childhood tuberculosis. So I'm not discussing the pathophysiology over here. So this will be the diagnosis part and the management part. Okay. So before moving on to how are we going to diagnose and the uh, latest algorithmic approaches. So just one slide about the natural history of childhood tuberculosis. So we all know there is a source case. So for any childhood TB, there will be definitely a source case. The child or the index case gets exposed. So what happens once there is an exposure, 70 percent of them do not have an infection. Okay. The rest 30 percent gets infected. Note that infection is different from disease. Okay. So, among 100 percent, only 30 percent actually gets the infection. So, among these 30 percent, so how many of them do get the disease? It is around 5 to 10 percent. So, what happens to the rest 90 to 95 percent? So, the remaining 90 to 95 percent remains latent. Okay. So, any time, any time during their coming years or during their future, when there is a drop in the immunity, this disease will get reactivated. So, there can be a late reactivation of disease. Okay. So, first you have to remember that not everyone gets the infection, only 30 percent gets the infection, and among the 30 percent, only 5 to 10 percent do get the disease. So, once they acquire this primary disease, it is dependent on the age. Say, less than 5 years are the highest risk. Among the less than 5 years, the infants, if 50 percent, I mean, uh, among the 100 percent of the infants who are exposed, 50 percent will get the infection and less than 5 years, 25 percent will get the infection. So, the infection rate increases with small age. Okay. And this primary disease again can be a pulmonary TB, can be an extra pulmonary TB, can be smear positive, can be smear negative. Okay. So, this is the natural history of childhood tuberculosis that you need to understand. Okay. So, 70, 30 and among the 30 percent only 5 to 10 percent will get the primary disease. So, with this on the background, we will start the discussion on tuberculosis. So, the tuberculosis disease can be pulmonary tuberculosis or can be extra pulmonary tuberculosis. So, pulmonary tuberculosis as the name suggests it is the involvement of the lung parenchyma. Okay. So, either the lung parenchyma or if the tracheobronchial tree is involved that is the pulmonary tuberculosis. Your miliary tuberculosis where there is disseminated nodules on both the lungs that is also classified among the pulmonary tuberculosis. Okay. So, in case a patient has both pulmonary TB and extra pulmonary TB, primarily it is referred as PTB. Okay. So, what happens in an extra pulmonary TB? Extra pulmonary TB means anything other than the lung is extra pulmonary TB. If it is lymph node TB, if it is intestine, uh, GIT, GUT, joint, bones, neurological, that is CNS TB. So, all these are extra pulmonary tuberculosis. So, now before moving on to the um, diagnosis, the diagnostic procedures, we will talk about some definitions of tuberculosis so that it will be easy for us to understand the management. So, what is this presumptive TB? Presumptive or presumption or you are presuming. Okay. So, any patient who comes to you with certain symptoms, say there is short course of fever, two weeks of fever or two weeks of cough or there is a failure to thrive in a baby no weight uh, gain in the last three months. So, I will tell you what are the symptoms that will suggest you. So, any typical symptoms of tuberculosis or when you examine you get certain signs which are suggestive of tuberculosis, then you presume that child to be having TB. So, that is a presumptive TB. Now, in this child you have not done any investigation. So, it is just the before step that is the first step of your uh, at the end of your examination say okay at the end of your history and examination you can write it as a case of a presumptive TB. Presumptive DRTB what is presumptive DRTB? DR means drug resistance okay DR means drug resistance. So, this presumptive DRTB refers to anyone who is eligible to be labeled as rifampicin resistant. So, why rifampicin resistance? So, it might be because the child could have had a previous treatment, okay, the previous treatment could have failed or 
on the or it can be a defaulter or a non responder clinically you can before testing you can write it as a presumptive drug resistance tb so what is this universal dst dst means drug susceptibility testing okay so drug susceptibility testing is everyone should have an universal access to the drug susceptibility testing at least for rifampicin okay at least for rifampicin as the first line then further drug susceptibility testing if rifampicin is resistant it should be available for fluoroquinolones okay so the universal access to drug susceptibility testing should be